So you want to grow mushrooms, do you? I think that's a great idea. I support you in that idea. It is such a wonderful, fun thing to do. Um, this video is going to help you at home to grow mushrooms outdoors in your own garden. I'm going to show you how. If you don't know me, my name is Talbot. These are my boys, my beautiful boys. And we grow mushrooms. For a living, we grow a lot of different kinds of mushrooms. Um, if you're new to this channel, check us out. Subscribe. We're talking about growing mushrooms. We're talking about health, nutrition. Uh, we got all sorts of wild videos, gardening. Strafaria rugoso annulata. King Strafaria is named for it. Wine cap mushroom, burgundy cap mushroom, garden giant. There's a lot of good common names for this mushroom. The beautiful thing about this mushroom is it provides accessibility for a home grower to grow them outdoors. You might have tried to grow a bunch of other mushrooms and failed. All right, you're not alone. It's common to fail growing mushrooms. That's part of it. The beautiful thing about this mushroom is you're going to your chances of success is much, much higher, right? And the reason why is this particular mushroom is extremely adaptable, right? Um, it grows on a lot of different things, it grows on a lot of different substrates, which makes this a really great mushroom to grow. For that reason, it also likes bacteria and microbe rich environments, which is not super common for mushrooms, right? This is my first time growing this mushroom. I've grown a ton of other mushrooms. Commercially, I've always wanted to grow this one. This year is the year for the King's Trafari. It's happening, y'all. Step one, get your spawn, all right? Once you get your spawn, then you basically put that into the patch. So I'm gonna show you how I did this patch. So today what we're gonna do, most people would say that you still should do your outdoor patch with wood chips. Today I'm gonna experiment with not doing wood chips. And the reason why is not everybody's got a chipper, right? I actually do happen to have access to a chipper right now. I could chip and do a patch proper, but I'm not going to so we can experiment and see about more accessibility for y'all. So we're gonna do this on a variety of materials. We're gonna use some old sugar cane that I had available that people can get very easily in my area. Um, I have a variety of different kinds of grasses. We have this cool grass here called vetiver. I have another grass dry that's been sitting around for a while, chileno. I have some leaves, some poratillo leaves that are left over from me chipping for shiitake blocks, super cool. And then I also have some bamboo leaves. So I'm gonna be using a combo of grasses and leaves. Oh, and the last thing, is I just felt like that was too much air space for the mycelium to run through. So I do have some sawdust. The spawn is also grown on sawdust. So I'm hoping between that little layer of sawdust and the sawdust spawn, it will be able to move through all these kind of more bunchy layers. It's the no chip patch today, the no chip. Um, so that is what we're gonna do. First, what we're gonna do is I'm putting this patch, it's very important, your selection of patch, you want it to be shady. This gets a tiny bit of morning sun, but other than that, it's in the shade, it's under a bamboo cluster that I'm growing off my gray water. And the exciting thing for me there is it drops a ton of leaves. So I'm kind of hoping, I'm gonna put the patch here where I clear it out, but I'm also kind of hoping that the, the mycelium starts running into the leaves and who knows what if it just matted all under it i don't know so first things first i'm gonna start putting down the cardboard um, i've got new bamboo shoots coming up here so you know we're gonna work around those cool so now we got a nice layer where we're gonna drop our whole patch onto so i like to do things like extra high ratio um and so I'm gonna use three spawn bags, two are this size and one's this like giant guy. Um, I'm gonna put them in at a very high ratio because I want this to work. And one thing is you could do it that way at home and establish yourself a strong patch. And then you can pull parts of that patch and expand elsewhere. But I really just wanna give this its best shot of running. So I'm gonna go at a high concentration. Um, of course, a higher concentration, it, your mycelium will have less space it needs to move to colonize the whole thing. In theory, um, you could get to fruitings faster, you can get to higher con colonization. But at the same time, it's you know less economic, right? You need more blocks to do it. So it's really up to you on how, what kind of ratio you wanna do it at. So now for the fun part, we're gonna break up this mycelium. Cool. 
So you can see it's made out of sawdust. Um, after it's all broken up, it looks like there's no mycelium in there, but gang, the mycelium is still in there. Um, and then you can open it up. Every mycelium has a different smell. Mm, this one, I love. It smells like peppermint. You, you guys want to smell it? Okay, you want to smell it? I made it in the lab. Mm, smells so good. It's like peppermint. Obviously, mushrooms need water to grow. So I'm gonna pre-moisten the bottom layer of this cardboard so it doesn't just suck all the moisture out. All my other substrate, I'll probably spray a little bit over, but I have found to get the best water rather than just spraying it as you go, I soak it in the bin so everything is, whoa, properly moistened. So I'm gonna do a little light layer of spawn. Little light layer of, this is pre-moistened, non-inoculated sawdust. All right, so again, I've pre-moistened all this stuff. So this is a vetiver layer. This is that dry grass. And again, this was just moistened. It's got a little sawdust mixed in it. And I don't know, I should probably like do like a variety of layers. So I'll do this kind of thin. So now I'm gonna do a bit more spawn, saturate it all in through here. So the sawdust is here to kind of help fill the layers. You can see how with the grass, it's like this, there's a lot of air spaces in there. So I have sawdust to hopefully help fill those air spaces. So now I got like bigger chips. So this is like bagasa, which technically is a grass too. It's from sugar cane. So this was pressed, sugar was pressed out of here. Um, and this, where I live, is really easy to get. The cool thing about this stuff, it's like bigger chunks. So it gives like, one, it makes it harder for worms to like eat through that and ditch the mycelium. So it provides like a nice stronghold for the mycelium. And two, they say bigger chunks can help lend to bigger fruitings, right? So it's nice to get like a different size material in here. Now I'm gonna put another layer. This is just, it's like layer cake, right? Just rocking a layer. And you can see I'm going really highly inoculated. Like this is probably overkill. You could get away with doing less. I just really want this to work. So if you go at a higher inoculation rate, you're gonna have a higher success of things working. So now I'm gonna put another layer of this kind of like vetiver grass in here. Is this is sawdust that yeah. I've sterilized in the pressure cooker and inoculated in the lab with this spawn. You wanna smell it? Yeah. Do you like it? What does that smell like? <laughs> this is the bamboo leaves that were there. I'm gonna go put this in the water and soak these. So now this is a nice saturated. I wanted to go this because this is like a pretty finely packed leaf layer. Get a little leaves in here. Get it to know the bamboo leaves. This is fun. So yeah, again, I'm dunking. You could like just sprinkle as you go, but I just think it's just a fast way to get full saturation. And a light layer of spawn. Get the idea, right? You're just layering, layering. Cool, so I'm doing another layer of bagasso. A little layer of sawdust. A light layer on top of that to establish. Now I got a layer of green leaves that were kind of sun dried. You know, we get a little nitrogen in there. I hope it's not too much. A little more bag ass on top of that. Spawn flopped in. And this is another kind of grass with those greens mixed in. So yeah, I'm thinking the grass helps it move laterally, the sawdust can help it move vertically. I'm feeling good about this. I'm feeling good. I think this is gonna work. I hope it's gonna work. Chip free. Chip free.
So if you're unfamiliar with how mushrooms work, this is all mycelium. It's going to regrow and fuse together and hopefully just have a huge mat of mycelium in here that will lead to epic fruitings. Cool, y'all. So it's been two weeks. I did come and check this after a week, and it was already starting to have islands of mycelium. Um, the way I finished this out is our batteries ran out on our thing, but what I did to kind of finalize it is layered a layer of substrate over it and then put cardboard down just to kind of hold the moisture in. It's been raining a lot lately, so I kind of actually want the rain water to start percolating through there. So let's, let's pop this cardboard off and take a peek at what's going on in here. It's exciting. All right, so there you go. That is mycelium, right? It's growing. Whoa, check that out. <laughs> I haven't peeled back yet. So there is some total mycelium going on in here. This is a nice establishing mat of mycelium. It is running on all these leaves and, and going to town. So if this was your patch at home, you don't necessarily want to just start ripping into it. Um, but I'm doing this for the video's sake, just to kind of see what's going on there. So we're going to pull back some of our layers. So you can see it's really been just going to town like that. Is some serious mycelium going on in there. So it's spreading. So that's the idea. Is you're just trying to spread this mycelium through there. So layer your stuff in and get it to spread and then it's it's what it's trying to do is colonize this whole mat of material so i'm going to pull off all this cardboard the point of this is just i just want like a nice light layer to allow the water and air to pass through but hopefully this will continue to shade it so i was literally standing right where this camera is right now peeing that way yesterday afternoon going i wonder if i'm gonna to have to do something to these this patch to like get it to fruit like put a casing layer or, you know initiate it some way i'm like is it getting too much light what's going on are the mushrooms ever gonna come and then i turned around and there they were um i saw these guys first <laughs> and i was so excited i'm like cool two mushrooms are coming and then i started looking closer i'm like oh no there's like a lot of mushrooms coming and it's amazing how fast it goes so it's really exciting gang from when I planted, when I inoculated this patch till fruiting was one month and a week. All right. Which is really, really fast. Most people I see on the internet, it takes like three months. The reason why it was so fast, it is rainy season, but also because I went a very, very, very high inoculation rate. Um, so it didn't take long for this thing to colonize. So y'all, <clears throat> when deciding where you want to put this patch, you want to put it where you're going to see them because with king's stafari mushrooms they grow really fast and the babies are really big and you want to eat the babies right the buttons the smaller guys and so the reason why is because as a mushroom grows it becomes more susceptible to insects right and so we are going to harvest them now while they are uncurled but all you got to do to harvest your mushrooms just grab at the base and pop this up look at that Back in here, there is a whole cluster. So I'm gonna see if I can harvest this. Oh my gosh, there's another one down there. Oh my God, this is awesome, y'all. Do try this at home. Do order Stefaria spawn and try this at home. So I'm gonna break this from the cluster so that these other clusters continue to grow. But look at that beaut. This is like a perfect King Stefaria mushroom. Harvest at the perfect time. So look at this beauty. They are Jeez. so earthy and good, you guys. They taste so good. And they're so meaty. What's up, y'all? Uh, recent discovery. 
thought I'd show you. Um, just three weeks, maybe a month later, and then they're like, come look down here, check us out. Cause boom, the gift that keeps on giving. Look at these gorgeous little mushrooms. So y'all, this is the second flush of King Strafaria. It is literally the gift that keeps on giving. This is awesome. This patch is just rocking it out. Some grass, some leaves, some sawdust. It's doing it for us. And um, yeah, we went on a big dry spell here. And, um, and then our water was out too. The municipality water was out. So this thing sat dry for a while. I was kind of worried about it. And then when the water came back on, I just watered it a bunch. I didn't think I watered it that, that much. I was actually thinking about giving it more water today, which I definitely will now. But even despite that, look at these little gorgeous little pups. Hmm? Hmm? Bing. Oh, what? what? What's this over here? Oh, some more popping up, pushing up mycelium. Oh, yeah. Hello. There they are in there. Uh, do I see one over there? No. There's some. There's some. Oh, yeah. Little cuties. Yeah, like that. Oh. Nice. Smell good? Yeah. What's this? 